Hello. <laughs> and we are live with two amazing Dutch women, Marika Kaiser and Ilse Paulus, partners, hey, in the women's lightweight double skull for I think almost three years now you guys have been rowing together. Yeah, yeah, 2017. Uh yeah, and um, and bronze and silver medalists in the World Championships, and there's lots to talk about in this. Um, Marika has won back-to-back under-23 singles titles. She's one of a, a long line of amazing Dutch women that have come very much into the fore of late. And Ilse, of course, um, with Mike Head, won the Olympic title in the Women's Lightweight Double Skulls in Rio, and there's lots to talk about in that. So really excited to be chatting to you. you. You you look very happy. Is that because you've got an afternoon off? Yeah, and of course we see you. Finally, we can hear the voice. <laughs> yeah. We miss it. I know we had, we had some technical problems before, but we're, we're fine now. So tell tell me, you, you trained this morning. So what was your session this morning? Um, we did some pieces in the single. It was a couple of five hundred meters against each other. Yes. Well, <laughs> we were missing Mariki this morning. This but, morning, I, I had, awesome. yeah, I had some um, issues with my bike. Typical. <laughs> she came <laughs> over bike. <laughs> <laughs> I had this little accident. But normally, we would be uh, against each other or with each other. Uh, it depends on the yeah. what's on the program. Uh, what? This morning, uh, not. But normally, we do. I know. So um, in your training program at the moment, how often are you doing pieces at race intensity? Two times a week uh, on Wednesday and on Saturday. And most of the time on, on Wednesday, we do a little bit shorter. And then on uh, Saturday, we do a little bit longer. Yeah. And, and is that because it's the summer and, you know, you should be racing at the moment? Um, is that you know, just to keep you interested and remember what racing is like, you're doing these pieces. Yeah, I think it's very uh, important that we feel the, yeah, the kind of race vibe and a little bit the stress of you want to do it right and you want to do the pieces fine and hard. And yeah, then you remember, oh yeah, this is what rowing is. And all those long endurance things, yeah. They sometimes are a little bit boring. I prefer them, but <laughs> it, it reminds you what you are doing and why you are doing it. And yeah, I yeah. like it. Yeah. So when when you do race, I know you weren't racing this morning, but who who tends to win the shorter pieces? Who wins the middle pieces? <laughs> Who <wins> the pieces? <laughs> <Move> Martin. <laughs> yeah. Let's let's say it depends on the week. <laughs> so I think. Um, I think Marike is, is, is stronger in a single than I am uh, at the moment. Um, and especially in like on, on race pace, you you win most. Yeah. I, I think yeah. I think she wins like when yeah, she's got this amazing like she just goes and I sometimes miss it. And then I'm like, oh uh, she's gone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're gone. Okay. <laughs> so uh, Ilse has got she's really not telling the full story over here she is really sometimes she makes it really hard and she wins quite a lot on the erg she wins every time yeah oh, she's like oh. a power machine so we, we alternate yeah yeah but also we've got uh, martina Teltes who's training with us she um oh. she's throwing a single sometimes in the doubles and yeah. she also also keeps us uh, on our feet yeah and uh, especially she's, she's a sprinter mostly so yeah she uh, <laughs> she, what, she, what she wants to win what happened today? Were you training with Martina, Ilsa? Yeah. Yeah, I was. And who won? She rode me home. Really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But she rose me home all the time. When we do shorter pieces, I'm like uh, this, this train. Like when we're done training, then I'm, I'm ready to, sh to, to rumble. Uh, and she's just straight on. She just knows. That's the same with Ilsa. They just, they, I always lose the first one. <laughs> yeah, and, <it's> yeah. <laughs> and then you're then, and then, then you're I'm there, and I'm yeah. like, oh, <laughs> we're doing pieces. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and you said it's different on the ergometer. I was going to ask you for your um ergometer. Like, um, do you have a do, does it do you win all the time on 2k or 5k, Ilsa, or 6k? Is it you do? 
um, we don't do that much testing. We do like a few few testing in the winter, sometimes um, in the springtime, just before racing starts. So we've yeah. got those two measure, measuring points in the season, basically. Um, and I'd say, yeah, I'm, I'm mostly on top, but I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, <laughs> fierce competition next year. Uh, so, so what are your, can you say what your 2K personal best is? Uh, mine's a 657 uh, yeah. and mine is 659.7. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's so close. And and do you prefer yeah. do you prefer the 2k test to the 5k test or the longer test? Which is your which is your preference? I take a 6k test any day over oh, a 2k test. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Oh, kidding. 2k is too right. short. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like at 3K, I'm like, oh, now this is getting started. Yeah. <laughs> and then you get this diesel, yeah, to the next uh, kilometers. Yeah, wow. we prefer the long. Yeah, long yeah, run. yeah. Now, um, one of the things that's been so strange about this year, which the whole world has been suffering from, is has been the postponement of the Olympic Games. And, um, and I know you've had a long time now to get used to it. Um, but uh, what was your reaction to that postponement, as a as individually and as a crew? I think at the moment it was decided. Uh, there's a couple of weeks before where there was still there was like lots of measurements or um, um, rules in place about social distancing and things being cancelled. Um, so in a couple of weeks leading up to that decision, we really were in um, like in dubio between wanting to train and wanting to prepare for the Olympics and also taking your like social responsibility of yeah. uh, isolating yourself and uh, living up to the rules, et cetera, et cetera. So I'd say those three or four weeks were really quite intense. And after the decision was made, for me at least, it just like the pressure of having to uh, perform under such uncertain circumstances at an Olympics, that just fell away. And from that point on, like, yeah, that was almost a relief. Um, and for me, it only came like a couple of weeks later that I realized, wait, there's not a season, <laughs> like a whole new <laughs> rowing year to come. And like, yeah, yeah. You, you've crossed off all the training camps, for example. Like you, yeah. last time I went there, last time I did this, last time I did this. And now that isn't the case anymore. You have to do that all again. And you have to like hype yourself up to do another Olympic year. So, yeah, that, that realization came a few weeks later. Yeah. And how about you, Marika? Yeah, I had a bit the same. Um, with the social distancing, I found it really hard to... Yeah, my mom was in a hospital working and I felt a little bit guilty that I was going out for mm -hmm. rowing and training and yeah. cycling because we were allowed to go outside by our own or by, uh, with our um, roommates. So that was quite okay. But I felt the guilt as well. And yeah, I... I did like when they told me like okay it's not gonna happen this year i was like oh no problem for me i'm young i don't have any res <laughs> runs, uh, responsibility i would just go on go on and yeah then i realized that i had some things planned for 2021 which like skiing uh stuff like that and yeah it 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 was a bit hard but i think i called ilza as well and said like how are you yeah, looking at this, are you in for another year? And I think yeah. we both had some time to think about it. And yeah, I remember that um, we were in Seville for training camp and we had uh, on the last Saturday, we had an ERC test uh, or two ERC pieces because we had the ERC test the next week. And then I I started crying quite, quite often. <laughs> but this time I was crying because of tiredness. <laughs> and Yosi, our coach, came up and he said, this is the worst you will feel in four years. So you've done it, done it okay. And now I'm like, oh, I have to do that another year. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, but I think, yeah, I, in the end, I really like the rowing. So that's something for me that that's easy to decide that I, yeah, I like yeah. that. One of the things I have to ask you is um, we'll, we'll talk about your world championship race last year. We'll talk about that later. And I've got some pictures of that. But just, you know, the, there was a, a good distance between you and the New Zealanders. I, I wonder if you think the delay is to your advantage in that, you know, Mariki, you're quite young. I know, Ilse, you're still quite young uh, as, to whether, <laughs> <laughs> as to whether that will be an advantage to your speed. 
or not? Um, I think I, I had a personal difficult year with my uh, injury. So, of course, I think I wasn't the best uh, on my world champs. Um, but I see every tournament as a different tournament. So I wasn't really like after the world champs, oh, we have to um, close the gap. I think, yeah, we were just yeah ready for it. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. It's just yeah, a yeah. feeling that. It doesn't really makes it easier because they can train uh, a year longer, but I think we know what we can. And yeah, we know that we had a bumpy year. Uh, so I think we just were really looking forward to race again and yeah. do the best we could. Yeah. When do, you uh, think, uh, when do you think you'll race again? Hopefully Europeans uh, this October. Fingers yeah, crossed. fingers crossed for that. Yeah. It it just it's just like this beacon of light <laughs> for me. <laughs> it gives me motivation for training. And if, if it if it ends up being cancelled, that's gonna be a bit of a letdown. But if that's the best, then of course, um, yeah, we'll we'll adhere to that. But for now, the Europeans are quite uh, are quite looking up to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I just wonder in terms of uh, lightweights. There's a lot of talk that this will be the last Olympics with lightweight rowing in. Um, I wonder, does that thought ever cross your mind? You know, what what if the 2021 Tokyo Games don't happen? Oof, yeah. <laughs> do, you, um, do you ever go there or is that something that is, is just not helpful to think about? I would say it comes to my mind sometimes and I push it away. <laughs> really hard. Yeah, like, you, you, yeah, it might not happen, but thinking about that now is not going to really bring you anything except for uncertainty and just stress, yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm just maybe uh, fooling myself and um, being convinced that it will go through. Uh, and if not, then we'll, I will deal with we'll yeah. that um, yeah. at that point. Yeah. In time. I think World Rowing are planning to have all the events next year with no spectators. I, I, I know that. That was something Matt Smith said. So I wouldn't be surprised that maybe if the Olympics is very has a very different feel to it. Yeah. Um, Could be. But, yeah. I think we'll, see. Be... we'll find out. Yeah. Yeah. So you're you're both part of this amazing wave that Dutch rowing is riding at the moment. Um, it's one of the strongest rowing programs in the world, and there were some fantastic results in the World Championships um, last year. How how do you explain that? Because it hasn't always been the case. I think we stick to the plan. Um, we're not looking that much. Um, to other countries, what they are doing. Like, I I know because I know Zoe McBride a little bit what their program is and what they do, and we, we chit chat about it, but we just have our own plan and we believe in that. And um, yeah, I think Ilse and Micah proved at the Olympics that sticking to the plan um, helps. So we just stick to the plan. Uh, we get it in our email yeah. <laughs> and we just do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that the whole Dutch. Um, the sculling team and also like the whole team we're just one big uh, family kind of like we know what's going on with other girls and I think that helps because sometimes when we're just such a small team the three lightweights we are with Martina yeah. um, and then it's so easy to just go out of your own little team and talk about it talk about the problems with other girls and I think that helps yeah 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 so um, it, it, it's it's really interesting to to hear you. Do you have do you have much contact with other um, other countries? Or like you mentioned, Zoe McBride, uh, you seem like very friendly people. So <laughs> do you have much time to socialise with other athletes and see how they're coping. Um, yeah, well, especially Zoe is uh, one of my friends. In 2016, we raced against each other. And I have some family in New Zealand, so um, I visit her and I train with the coach and yeah, for three days or something, but we kind of friends and now we're frenemies. <laughs> 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 but most of the time after tournament, we, we have to chat, we talk about it. She brings me in Weedabix, which I really like, and I give her Strobafels, which she really likes. So yeah, it's friends, but frenemies, but Zoe's a special, um, special case i think but of course lightweight growing we see each other at the weigh-in so 
yeah, we yeah. see each other just a little bit more than normal crews do, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it, it's quite interesting. Um, I remember you, you mentioned 2016. I remember you, Marika, from 2016. You you were the, the face of that championships and, and everywhere um, that you look, there were these huge billboard posters of you all around Rotterdam. And um, I think there was a TV advert um, that you were featured filming. Yeah. Um, how... <laughs> How was all that? Do people recognize you in Rotterdam streets when you go there now? No, <laughs> no, 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 it's no. I had a lot of makeup on, so lots of people didn't really recognize me. Um, and yeah, rowing is not a big sport. Yeah, you just do it because you love it. Uh, I really enjoyed being kind of the, the poster girl uh, from Rotterdam. Um, yeah, that was really special because it's my hometown. So yeah, it was yeah. special for me, but I, yeah, the attention was small, but I don't really like the attention. So it was <laughs> perfect. <laughs> so what is the thing? I know you live in Amsterdam at the moment and train with, with Ilsa um, on, on the board uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, that's <laughs> the question. Come on. Come on. No, yeah. So what is, and, and you, that you are desperate to get back home to Rotterdam. That you, yeah. how much do you like this <laughs> in Amsterdam? Yeah. Yeah. It's just how you said it. I just love Rotterdam. <laughs> Why? Uh, hmm? Why? <laughs> Why? Oh, it's just... <laughs> It's just a little village. It's a big city, but it's a village. I just, I don't really enjoy Amsterdam that much. <laughs> <laughs> There's a very quite an old rivalry between Amsterdam and Rotterdam. Um, and I think yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you are an example of that. A little yeah, bit. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I guess like you, you've, um, you started uh, rowing Rotterdam, you've had your students uh, student time there, so you also have lots of social yeah, contacts. It's just there. my social life over there. And I get yeah, and I guess being being taken out of that bubble and into a new city is quite yeah. challenging. Yeah. I think it's also because Ilse she uh, rose at Neerhuis uh, in uh, Amsterdam the rowing club and my rowing club is in uh, Rotterdam as well. So my social life is over there and I don't have really much friends in Amsterdam. So when I just want to grab a coffee, I always have to stick to those rowing girls <laughs> instead of just uh, friends outside of rowing. But yeah, I, I do enjoy Amsterdam a little bit more every time. <laughs> Sometimes <Yeah>. not. <laughs> well, that, that's nice. And it's your home city, Ilse, um, Amsterdam. It feels like it now. I wasn't born here and I was oh. raised uh, in the countryside. Um, but I've been I've lived in Amsterdam for about eight years now, so yeah, yeah. I would call Amsterdam my home. Yeah, yeah. And I I notice you you are um, engaged to a, a rower. Yeah. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's correct. <laughs> so how long have you been engaged for? Quite a while. <laughs> no, I have to say that like rowing just is just prioritised over so many things. So we we haven't got like the time to make it final yet really so it's been almost two years but it's it was on the calendar for next year <laughs> and then oh, it was no. again, i have to say it's it's not too like yeah i don't really mind too much um <laughs> <laughs> no like yeah not, nothing really will change but it's nice if we can finally uh, get a big fun going what what are the advantages and disadvantages of of um of being with another rower I guess like he understands um, he understands what rowing is also what, what's the fun of it so he can see why why I like it so much and also I think what it helps if you have a partner that's also uh, used to doing top sports um, that he will recognize um, that if you're tired and exhausted you just don't want to do anything and it's not because you don't like them or because you don't find that fun you just like don't have any energy left after training to do something fun so I guess yeah, he recognised that and acknowledges that, and we take we take uh, quality time when when we both uh, have time and have energy to do so. Yeah. So I guess that helps. You don't have to explain yourself if if you if you're not up to do something. What about the disadvantages? It's also a bit like I would say it's a small world rowing is uh, in the Netherlands yeah. at least. 
Um, so yeah, you, you've got quite a small bubble. And as Marika said already, there's quite little contact outside of the rowing world. So sometimes maybe like a fresh look outside in the rest of the world uh, would be nice, but yeah, I'm not complaining. I read somewhere your partner took you on a cycling holiday to the Dolomites after. <laughs> yeah, no, it was, it was my idea. It was your idea. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm afraid so. Yeah, I have to take this one. Yeah, no, we um, we enjoy cycling together, um, and we end, we ended up uh, in the Dolomites a few years back. But we're two competitive people. <laughs> we just had a full on training time. Yeah, we had a whole like uh, general uh, classification going. <laughs> Rules changed during the cycling trip in both our advantages. No, it was quite, it was quite intense, but it was really, really quite big fun. Yeah. Um, I had to deal with the consequences a little bit later, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it would have been quite the same way, but like being active in my, in my time off is something I enjoyed.